Let us step back. And I mean, here you just have uh, written what we more or less said by commenting the, the mathematical model. We can uh, classify the terms that appear in the equation of motion as terms in acceleration. And uh, each of these terms has uh, an interpretation that can help or less in the This is a vector n by 1, n by n, n by 1. This is a vector n by 1. And here I have uh, n by n uh, configuration dependent element. They represent the inertia seen from a certain axis in a certain configuration. Uh, can help or, or not the interpretation depends a lot on your background if you worked with similar uh, concept uh, earlier. But basically, from the physical aspect, mass by acceleration the mass is the inertia, is the, let me say, the inertia of, this, of the material point uh, in uh, uh, changing the current uh, velocity. The concept is similar for a uh, inertia matrix. Okay. The larger, the more effort you need to change its velocity. The, the smaller, means light structure, a light robot, if you have a, a small inertia. Of course, this is a matrix. We know that we don't have an order relation among matrices, but the concept of is uh, embedded in all the norm-related information of a matrix. Then you have uh, the quadratic velocity term that embed the currently uh, a centrifugal S, uh, effect in, uh, in, the, in the robot. And then you have uh, the configuration dependent term. Configuration only, because all the model is configuration dependent. If this is very easy to understand. Let's imagine uh, my arm. If I want to move uh, around the shoulder, I see a certain inertia here. The same mass in this configuration, I see another inertia. Okay, I'm changing my inertia, it's configuration dependent. And this is what, for example, the, cat, the cats does when they fall down. The way they always, uh, most of the time, uh, they arrive at the ground with the legs uh, is by changing the inertia. They change, open and close the legs, change inertia, this changing the uh, rotation velocity, and this is the way they always fall down in the, in the legs. The concept is the same. My inertia is function of my configuration. Uh, at uh, the right hand side, we have added uh, the non-conservative force. So the actuation torques, my input in uh, my control law. Then we consider viscous and static. Uh, friction is a complex uh, uh, phenomenon. We can consider a, a simplified, we are going to consider a simplified one here. And uh, the eventual contact at the end effector. Okay? This is also a simplified term because you can have contact everywhere in a structure. It's not difficult to take into the consideration. Of course, we are not going to do it for this class. But if you want to have uh, a, a, a more advanced control system, you can uh, consider contact in different places. Actually, you can also estimate that. Okay? By knowing the dynamic model, you can estimate if you had the contact or not, and you can estimate where and the force and moment of your contact. This is something, for example, that we have done uh, now several 
a long time ago in a, in a, in a technology transfer with Comau, uh, by knowing the model, an impact detection node. Okay? They just knowing the model, understood if the robot touched something. Okay? This is something that uh, is uh, uh, more or less available in uh, some advanced robots uh, in, on, the, on the market. Well, just one slide on the friction. I just want you to uh, remember that we are going to simplify a lot the friction. Uh, we are going to consider only the viscous friction. So for us, the friction uh, is a line passing to the region. But this is not the reality. This is static friction. The reason why uh, the mobile phone is not, uh, is not uh, um, sweeping down is that there is static friction. Okay? And uh, at very low velocities, if this is the velocity of two surfaces, at very low velocities, you can have a different model. The, 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 the difficult aspect is that some, sometimes this is a, a very low velocity under the, the resolution of your sensors. And uh, sometimes it's also a function of variables that you don't measure at all. For example, the temperature, the local temperature. We are going to ignore the fact that friction is a, a more complex phenomenon as we will study. Okay. Dynamic model properties. Well, this is quite obscure now for you. Anti-symmetry of the matrix B dot minus 2C. And uh, uh, let us, I mean, survive uh, with the fact that we are not going to enter into the details the matrix B dot minus 2C is anti-symmetric, okay? Uh, it is anti-symmetric for a physical reason, and this property is exploited uh, in the design of some controllers. But we are not going to too much details of it, okay? Another property that is exploited in order to identify the model is the linearity, linearity in the dynamic parameters. And again, the linearity in the dynamic parameters is very interesting and also, I mean, rich topic. I usually do as, uh, uh, I usually did in uh, identification and filtering, but now Professor Marino is also doing the part of the, of the of the class in uh, identifying the dynamic parameters of the robot, uh, exploiting this property that we are going to see. Okay, so now we are just going to see the, 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 the very simple example with the pendulum, and then <coughs> I'm going to more or less skip the, the, the version for the, for the system full degrees of freedom robot. Okay, so the dynamics of a pendulum is represented by this scalar one equation, the scalar function in uh, theta and theta dot. <coughs> it is uh, non-linear in theta. Here we do not have uh, the corollary and centrifugal terms. Okay, so if you look, there is not theta dot square. We we need another robot in order to order another, another. Okay. I can rewrite my equation in this form. Look, it's very it's very easy to, to verify that this is true because you have a, a matrix of one row and three columns multiplied by this three by one vector. 
I'm just doing by inspection. I separated on one end all the constant parameters related to the dynamics. Inertia, viscous friction, and uh, this is uh, the mass multiplied by a vector connecting the region of the frame to the center of mass. So the first moment of inertia. And uh, so this vector is constant and this is given by some uh, known or measurable quantities. Position, velocity, and acceleration. And gravity is a constant. Okay? This is very interesting because it means that uh, I'm separating in one matrix, is one line but it's a matrix in a general case, we will, we will see it. In one matrix I have all known terms, measurable or I know G is a constant. In the vector I have uh, all the dynamic parameters of my model. You can, you can say, okay, you know them. Yes, I have uh, a CAD estimate of them. I have uh, a CAD that sometimes is very, very accurate, but for the friction, no one can tell me any CAD value. And the center of mass is a little bit less accurate than the inertia, for example, because it, it, it depends where the mass are are uh, located, depends for if the manu manufacturer spent enough time during the cut or doing the cut. We worked with a robot where the manufacturer didn't, uh, didn't have any estimate for them. Okay? They just build the, the, the link and uh, without model. And uh, it can be demonstrated that, and we are not going to do it, okay? That for each link, uh, I can uh, have, uh, I can put on the, on the right vector those constant term, the mass scalar. The first moment of inertia, it, the mass multiplied by the position of, three by one position of the center of mass. So three elements, and then the inertia tensor. Inertia tensor is, three by three, apparently is nine, but it is symmetric. It means that I have uh, six elements, not nine. For each link, I have uh, 10 dynamic parameters. Uh, the potential energy is linear with respect to mass and first moment of inertia. So again, the same as earlier, not new. Thus, I can write the Lagrangian, and uh, for each link I have uh, 11, not 10, because I want to add also the inertia for the motor. For each link I have 11 dynamic parameters. For our robot, with 7 degrees of freedom, we have, well, not 77, because we measure, we measure the torque uh, after the gear ratio, so we don't feel the inertia of the motors. We have 10 for each link, okay? Plus the frictions. So in total, you start with uh, 84 dynamic parameters. You need to know those numbers in order to make the inverse and the di direct kinematics. Uh, dynamics, sorry, dynamics. Okay. I'm not going to the details, but what is important that we have matrices again. Mm. System theory, robotics, linear algebra is everywhere. Okay? Surprise linear. <coughs> I mean, enough. Well, for me, it was a surprise when I, when I was a student. Tau is the vector with the joint torques. It's equal. I can rewrite. The, the dynamics using a, a matrix that is this one with the 
n rows and a certain number of columns, 70, 80, it depends from what I said, multiplied by this vector of constant dynamic parameter. And well, okay. We are very skilled now in solving this one. Huh? Basically, I can, uh, I can impose a trajectory. I measure q, q dot, q dot, dot. I have the regressor. I can measure the torque. I have the, the, the known terms. I identify x. This is uh, for one single in, in a single um, instant. Uh, it's obviously low rectangular because I have, for example, seven lines and 77 columns. But if I do for a trajectory, this is true at every single time, each uh, certain time. I can do for a trajectory, I can have as many rows as I want. And so this is uh, in over determinate set inverse, and all known that we know very well. Okay? We are not going to, to do it in detail now, but this is, I, I have done it in the last, uh, I think, uh, uh, two, three um, years in identification and filtering. Now Giacomo is uh, doing for the, for, uh, for the robot uh, a, of course, the one that we have done in, in the class still had some uh, bugs. Now we, we are doing for the, for the robot in the lab, and the results are very nice. And I will show you uh, next time a little bit of plots of the identification. Okay, uh, we end uh, with uh, uh, the derivation of the model for simple structures. We are not, we, you are going to use uh, in the model of the uh, robot that we have in the lab, but we are going to provide you the robot. You cannot read the terms. I mean, it's not uh, uh, handable by hands. So you, you have to trust the code developed by someone else. But now, for very simple structure, we can see the main, uh, the main uh, components. So we can appreciate the theory done. Okay, two link Cartesian robot. Uh, this is basically a plotter. Okay, plotter are two link Cartesian but on the on the horizontal uh, plane. In this case, we consider a vertical one. But this is a plotter. Uh, we are not going to, to go into to the details, but I, I, I want you to to touch or to see that all the Jacobians uh, are very easy. And we already have the Jacobians. Here we can even write it down symbolically and, uh, and uh, uh, compute the inertia matrix. Those are the Jacobian that we need. The Jacobian with respect to the uh, center of mass and the position of the motor. So we have to make some assumption on where the motors are. Okay? They, can ch they can change from one structure to another. And then we are able to, to, to build the inertia matrix. This is a very strange inertia matrix uh, uh, because if you look, uh, it is diagonal and it is not function of the joint positions because the plotter is a very strange robot. You have two translational, uh, two translational motors. So it's not really function of the configuration uh, the inertia seen by each motor is the same. Okay. And uh, the first one, if you look at the first one, the first motor sees the two masses, then the mass of the second motor, because is below the first link, and then the inertia of the first motor. The second sees only the second, okay? It's not affected by the inertia of the first one. Because this is where the second is, okay? The gravitation is uh, zero for the second one, for the assumptions made, this is trivial, and it's constant for the first one. Again, it's a very specific, uh, strange robot. 
constant gravity because of course I mean our our is a plotter on the on the vertical plane. And those are the motion equations. Very, very easy. Now, are those equations linear or not? The second is linear, the first is not. Yeah, because there is the constant term. Okay? The two link plan are now, very briefly, uh, is something that is closer to a robot. We decide that the motor position, uh, the second motor is in P1. And uh, it means that the first motor is here. The first motor is here in the region, and the second motor is here. Okay? So the, fir the first motor is still, and the second is moved around by the stretch. Now, our Jacobians now are configuration dependent. We already studied those Jacobians. You know that they are configuration dependent. And uh, I can compute them very easily. The only, the only thing I have to notice is this one. Now I want the linear velocity for this point here, the center of mass, and for this point here, the center of mass. Okay, let me draw a little bit just so to understand what is the, the, the only difficulty that is not the difficult. This one, the linear velocity is this one, is conceptually equal to compute the linear velocity of this one, but the only difference is the length here. For this one, I need to propagate all, and then the only difference is the last length that is changed. That's all. Okay. The orientation is the same because the orientation, uh, the angular velocity is the same all along uh, a rigid body. I do have uh, the, the mathematical and also the software instruments to compute the Jacobians easily. And now, this is my inertia matrix. Now, the inertia matrix is a little bit uh, nicer, it's a little bit more complex. And if you look at the inertia matrix, it is written by exploiting the, uh, not exploiting, sorry, but uh, evidencing the dependency with respect to Q. And in particular, it is written theta 2 to stress the fact that for this robot, Theta 2 affect part of the inertia. If uh, I consider the inertia from the second motor, what I see is this link here. And uh, the inertia, without considering, I mean, the gravity is not affecting the inertia. No? So this motor always see this link here. This is the reason why it is not affected by the configuration. The last one is, is always the same. Whatever is this configuration, is always needs to rotate this. On the other end, this one sees a different inertia because it's the same example as I did earlier. This one is an, an inertia that is function of theta 2, but not theta 1, because I don't care if I'm in this or in this configuration. For this guy, it's the same. Yeah? Then the symbolic expression for uh, the individual element is already something that, I mean, is, is one line here, the B11, and I'm with the simplest robot that I know. So it will be very, very complex and difficult to see by um, visual inspection. We made uh, a bug when we first wrote the equations for the identification of the robot in the lab. In order, and something was incoherent from the physical aspect, in order to check the bug, we had to think 
a specific uh, test, numerical and experimental, to find the bug. Because it was simply impossible by visual inspection to, un inspection to understand what was the bug. Now we also have centrifugal and corollary forces, and they can be collected uh, in this matrix here. And okay, we can verify the anti-symmetry that I told you, I mean, we are not, uh, and the gravitational force. The gravitational force are both function of <coughs> theta, theta one and theta two, of course, okay? Because here we are assuming that the, the gravity is along that axis. And there is, of course, the first moment of inertia and some trigonometric function. The motion of equations for this Robots are already something that is not handable by end. It's not, it's not manageable by end. I, 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 I can write easily a function to compute the director and inverse kinema, uh, dynamics, sorry. Uh, but, for example, as I told you several times, the bug is something that can take you a lot of time. The bug uh, is uh, a time-consuming process in robotics because all the all the all the uh, the, the tools, the equations, uh, the, 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 the matrices, the Jacobians, from the symbolic aspect, are, are more or less complex. So you cannot uh, understand easily. Uh, if you made, for example, a, a, an error of a sign here, you need to first to write proper code from, from scratch. Always commented, uh, always uh, with, uh, with uh, a clear range of uh, the variables and, I mean, proper from the computer science aspect. And then you have to test your codes when you build up a complex one. This is what we are doing in, in, uh, in practice lesson, because yesterday, uh, last Monday, we have done differential inverse kinematics for position only, for a very simple structure. Then we are going to add the quaternion next time for the same structure. And then we, are, we will work on a six or seven dimensional structure in a progressive way of increasing um, complexity, okay? Okay, um, parameterization. Uh, we, we are going to, to we are going to, to skip this because this is the linearity in the parameters for the two uh, for the planar Turing robots. But as I say, it is important that you know the properties. But then we are not going to enter into those uh, details. Okay, uh, and then I stop here. Uh, you can have a, a look at the plots in the, in the textbook or in the slides where all the various dynamics terms are isolated one each other. Of course, in simulation we can do it easily. Here there is a possible, I mean, uh, value for the dynamic parameters and for different trajectories you can appreciate uh, what is the dynamic component that is larger than the other. Okay, and you can have a look at the plot, uh, but we, we stop here without entering. Okay, and uh, 